What's up everyone? Welcome back to Fish and Hex and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make reef tank filter socks. Here's an example of what we'll be making. Now this is a hanging version, okay? As you can see the hole there and when we're done you'll see how it makes sense in my actual sum. So what you need to get started, uh, a template, all right, it's just easier to have a template. Now I get my fabric at Joann Fabrics. I will show a picture here in a second of the type of fabric that I get with the SKU number so you know exactly what you need to get. This is six yards, had a pretty good deal. I usually get it when it's on sale. A little sewing machine here, I got this off eBay. I'll find the link and put that on there too. I got it for like 20 bucks, it's pretty sweet. It comes with a pedal and it's small so I can uh, pack it away when I'm not using it. Pen for the template. I use a old uh, soldering iron to punch holes through this. You'll see why here in a second. Scissors to cut white thread and the little sewing machine uh, threader thing I'm a jigger uh, I don't know the terminology forgive me anyways guys so we're gonna go ahead and lay the fabric out and get started on the template so now we're back here with our template what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put out as many as we can on the table here and then we're gonna cut them out so I have actually have two layers so we're gonna get two filter socks per cut and it really doesn't have to be perfect, all right? So you can just line it up any way you want. Try to make the rest of them as straight as possible. Don't worry about the ink, because we're gonna bleach these and clean them thoroughly before we use them. I'll probably just cut this excess off here. All right, so that's technically two just continue down the line. Now the reason why I started making these filter socks in the first place is if, I don't know if you've ever purchased any of them. If, you, if you're watching this video, you probably have purchased them and realized that they are about what, four or five dollars a piece if you're not getting them wholesale. And that's, uh, you know, if I'm using two every three days, you can see how expensive that gets over a period of time. Um, I know with three yards of this fabric, I can get roughly 30 filter socks. And I only have to, and the only time I ever throw them out is if they get ruined. If they start leaking, or, you know, if you don't feel like fixing them at that point, you can just throw them out and keep going. But uh, I usually get, let's see, I made, I made the first 30 about four months ago, and I wash them once a month. And they're still they're still rocking pretty good. I probably only lost like five or six of them, so I find it to be very cost effective. And uh, as long as you're you know they're changing them frequently, you're not going to have any you know nutrient issues or anything like that. So let's go and do one more row here, and then we'll cut these out. And that's you know speaking of filter socks, uh, changing them. Um, the reason why I choose to change them every three days, they're not nearly, they're not really dirty in the three-day period. I guess it depends on how much I'm feeding, but uh, nine out of ten times they're not very dirty. But it's good to change them often, so if you do get any detritus in there, it can be uh, removed from the tank before it has a chance to break down. And that's the whole point of using a filter sock anyway, is to get those small particles and floating debris. And since I have a bare-bottom tank, uh, a lot of stuff gets mixed up on the surge modes and uh, it gets filtered out very quickly. So, all right guys, so that gives us quite a few filter socks, so let's get into cutting them and get started. All right, it's time to cut these out and uh, try not to move the fabric around very much or cut your fingers off, which I almost just did. And uh, the, I actually just got these new scissors because I tried to use some old ass ones that I had before and uh, they don't cut this fabric very well, so. Cut that out. Let's get around here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, if you have massive, crazy OCD, uh, this project might drive you crazy. But if you uh, can live with it and just make adjustments as you go, you'll be fine. Because once they're sewed together, you'll see that I actually trim off any excess. fly in. That's the worst part about this time of year is I like to keep the windows open and that because it actually helps with the pH of the tank too so I like to have the windows open and the door open all day long but then you get these 
stupid freaking flies that come in here and drive me nuts. Alright, so there's that. Hopefully you guys can still see this. I haven't checked the camera, so if not, I apologize. There's two. And you can make them whatever size you want. This just size works perfectly for my sump. Um, it kind of keeps it out of the macroalgae for the most part. And I really don't have any overflow issues unless something, you know, unless I overfeed the tank or somebody else overfeeds the tank and clogs the filter socks up real quick, they'll start overflowing. But other than that, the size is pretty good for if it's changed out every three days. All right, so here is our pile. And that'll keep us busy for a while. And we still have, that was only what, maybe three feet of it. So we still have another three feet to make. So you can see it's really a lot of filter socks. So I'm gonna get the sewing machine set up and we'll come back and get started. Okay, the sewing machine is set up and ready to go. It just took me a couple minutes to get used to it again. As you can see, it's a pretty small machine, but uh, it works very well and it was cheap. So I'm uh, definitely not mad about that. Anyways, let's move this out of the way real quick. Let's look at the filter sock. So, um, they're supposed to be even on both sides, so it really doesn't matter which way you fold them. I guess just find out what works best for you. Uh, it depends on how crooked you cut them. It doesn't really matter because that's all going to be adjusted down the road. So I'm going to choose this to be the top. So you just determine what you want to be the top of the filter sock. And we're going to do our first sew like this, which is the lip. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on string pull it out real quick and I always do it twice through I always do a double stitch on everything it takes a little bit longer but uh, it works out better in the long run it lasts longer So our lip is done here. Okay, so now it's time to fold it in half. Okay, bring the sheet back over here. Now you're just gonna do this side. through and do it again. So the filter sock is almost done. We have two more steps. Uh, remember I told you we were gonna trim off the extra, so I always come back through, trim off the extra that we don't need. Kind of makes it look a little bit better too. Try to get um, as many of these extra strings off if you have any. Because when you wash them, if you um, have an excess string, there's a good chance that they'll get caught up in the dryer. 
So that is the finished filter stock, this part. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna heat up our soldering iron there and punch a hole through. And then you'll see why I do that. There's two reasons, uh, actually to hang it up in the sump and then to also hang it on the, the uh, filter sock ring. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, now that our heating iron is at temperature, so let's go ahead and put the hole in it. Um, it's pretty much personal preference. I like to put mine right below the actual um, top seam. It just adds some strength to it. And I just punch a hole, do a little divvy out of there. That's it. Um, so now the hole's good to go, and we'll go to the sump, and I'll show you how to install one of these. Um, I have two extra ones ready to go uh, that were already washed, and uh, we'll install those into the sump. But the next step is do all your filter socks, then go ahead and um, wash them all as you would uh, with bleach. I recommend do a rinse cycle first on the washer to get any soap residue out. Put these in there with bleach, wash them, then put them in the dryer, and uh, put them on your ring, you're good to go. So speaking of the ring, let's go ahead and look at this real quick. So this is the actual ring, move that out of the way. It's basically an old um, restrictor valve that I had on the uh, RODI system, some RO tubing. Once you get all your filter socks, good to go. I just put, the, put them through on the ring and you can just hang them up and that's it. So you can fill, I usually have the whole ring full, um, but uh, we are behind schedule on that. I need to clean all those filter socks. I figure I'll make a bunch of them and do one big batch when it comes to cleaning. Other than that, guys, let's move over to the sump and we will install the filter socks. Real quick, guys, this is the five gallon bucket that I use to store my restock, my refilter socks. Um, and it definitely smells. I just put a little bit of water in there with bleach to hold them and then it just stays outside. Keep the cover on it. Once uh, it's full, I just go ahead and uh, do a couple rinses in the tub or the sink, wherever you prefer, uh, just to get most of the detritus out and then I wash them as normal. So let's get to the sump and install these two filter socks. All right, so I turned off one of the refugium lights in hopes that you would be able to see better. But anyways, uh, there's a little stainless steel hook here, and there's also one on the other side. Now I have two returns, okay, and then I have the backup in the middle. So we just unhook, let it go down. I just sit out here and drain, unhook the other one down below. And I just let those drain out. Take our new filter sock underneath, return, and this is probably the last run for these two in particular just because they are worn out. Hook it on there. So you can see the threads coming out and uh, it just, this is the last run for these guys. Like I said, I get like, I don't know, three to four or five uses out of them. It just, like I said, it just depends on how I initially uh, sewed them together. But And then we just take our old ones, throw it in the bucket close it up it's good to go I do that every three days and uh, sooner if I find that uh, it's just getting dirtier too quickly anyways guys that's the video I hope it was helpful if you have any questions let me know and um, as always like comment subscribe and I'll see you next time later